Hi, happy Saturday. First of all, sorry for the lighting. And Milo. We are in the middle of Hurricane Barry, or what's supposed to be Hurricane Barry, uh, but it's not really storming that bad right now, but knock on wood. Um, <laughs> however, it's really dark outside, so I had to bring in as much artificial light as I could, which is, I feel like, making the lighting really weird, so I apologize for that. I was actually going to post my Whole Foods haul this morning on my vlog, but I don't know, something just kind of felt weird about that because of the whole hurricane going on. I thought I would do a video on how my family prepares for hurricanes. Um, once again, I'm going to preface this like you do what's best for your family, but this is just what we do and I thought I'd share it with you. When we hear a storm is coming, the very first thing we do is make big blocks of ice because if you have to keep your food cold for any reason, whether you're evacuating or you lose power, if you have to keep your food cold in an ice chest and all you have is little cube ice, that's gonna melt like really quickly and your food's gonna wind up spoiling. But if you have a big block ice, and especially if you have a good um, ice chest, like one of those Yeti ice chests or a nice one that will keep your food cold for a long time, if you have that and block ice, you can keep your food in the ice chest for like a week and it'll be fine. So that's the first thing we do is we always make sure we have big block ice and I'll show you how we do that. Excuse my dirty fridge that's having toddlers around uh, fingerprints. But we save these um, half gallon milk containers in the garage for situations like this. Of course, we wash them out first uh, before we put them in storage. But we literally just make as much as will fit in the freezer. And luckily, we didn't have too much in our freezer right now, so we fit a lot. We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 big blocks of ice. So if we have to try to save our food, we'll be able to because we have all this ice. And I pack a bag of food uh, for multiple reasons. If we wind up having to go somewhere else, um, we, we're going to need food to eat. Or if we evacuate last minute, that means that the entire city is evacuating last minute. And so we're going to be stuck in traffic for a long time. Um, I was 15 when Katrina hit. But I, of course, still remember it. And we sat in traffic trying to get from New Orleans to Baton Rouge for almost 24 hours. It was insane. So if we hadn't had food in the car with us, we would have uh, been really hungry by the time we got to Baton Rouge. So I always pack a bag of food. A lot of the stuff in here is actually stuff I keep in the pantry for um, hurricane season, for stuff like this. Like this is definitely not stuff we would eat on a daily basis canned chicken like mm, not exactly appetizing vienna sausage but this is stuff that i can keep in the pantry for years like i, I did happen to buy it this year because we needed some but i can keep this in the pantry for years and uh like if we get a hurricane next year i can just put the same cans in the bag but some granola bars i think i have some fruit cocktail i have a lot of stuff that takes a long time to go bad that i've been saving in the pantry I have peanut butter, I have crackers, um, I have some baby food pouches because Milo still eats baby food uh, probably about once a day. He still has some of that. I have trail mix, I have some veggie straws, some goldfish, uh, some granola bars. Milo loves these things. Uh, Quinn has some protein bars in there and some uh, granola bars. But you do not want to be stuck anywhere, in the car, in someone else's house, wherever. You do not want to be stuck there without food. So we have this ready to go. If we have to evacuate or go anywhere very quickly, we just grab Water it. Water that we always have stored in uh, glass jugs because you don't want to be stuck in your house without power for a long time without enough drinking water. So we always keep that. And then I have our go bags in case we have to leave very quickly. If you have to get out of here like, within minutes, you don't have time to be running around packing a bag. So we just keep it right here just in case. I mean, this is literally worst case scenario. But in worst case scenario, we have everything totally packed where we can literally throw it in the car and be out of the house in less than five minutes. So that's the goal. Two kids in diapers. Uh, Quinn's still not potty trained. Um, well, we actually normally have her in pull-ups, but in a situation like this, we just use diapers. We have a box. Uh, I think there's a hundred, yeah, a box of a hundred diapers that we can just grab the whole box. In the suitcase, I have um, everything for my entire family. I just squeezed it all in one suitcase, so we only had one bag. It's five outfit changes and two sets of pajamas for me, Sean, Quinn, and Milo. 
and I think we all have one pair of shoes in there. There's toiletries, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, all that stuff, um, medicines, and a couple other things. I think I squeezed a towel in there, and a couple other random things. Yeah, a sleeping bag for Quinn. This is um, foam rubber just like that, but you just unzip it and it rolls out. And then uh, that's another piece of foam rubber for sleeping. And then I also have a mesh bag in my room um, so that if we had time, we could throw all of our pillows and a couple blankets uh, in the mesh bag and take that as well. But if we had to leave here in a hurry, we have one suitcase, one food bag, a box of diapers, the bed, the foam bed, and the piece of foam rubber, uh, and the sleeping bag. So we only have six things that we have to get in the car, but it's all completely, like see, there's our front door. It's all completely ready to go so that we don't have to be worrying about anything if uh, we have to get out of here really quickly. I would probably uh, make sure that the kids had their clothes and shoes on while Sean was throwing all of this in the car. Then we would put the kids in the car and get out of here. Disclaimer. I am not an expert. This is just what my family does. I'm just sharing what we do, what works for our family, not telling you it's what you should do. You do what works best for your family, but this is just what we do and I wanted to share it with y'all um, in case anything we do would be a good idea for your family too. Both kids are now playing in the room, so it might get a little loud. Now I'm going to go into what we're actually um, prepared for and uh, all of our possible plans. That's the thing with a hurricane is, thank goodness we get warning, but it's also very unpredictable and uh, lots of different things could happen. We knew that this one wasn't going to be too bad, so we did not evacuate. We stayed home. We actually didn't even board up the house because uh, the winds weren't expected to be too bad. Um, I think they actually just upgraded it to a Category 1 hurricane, but it's still not really formed. And we've had these basically scattered thunderstorms is what it's been. So hopefully it doesn't get too much worse, but it really hasn't been that bad. Um, however, if it had been a Category 2 or higher coming at us, we would have totally secured everything, boarded up the house, and evacuated. So we always just keep our eye on them and... Uh, and see how how bad they're gonna get before they hit land. Um, some other things you could do is if you're at risk of losing water pressure, you could fill up all your bathtubs with water so that's, that way you have even more water and for flushing toilets and stuff like that. We luckily have never really lost water power in this house. Even during Hurricane Katrina, after Hurricane Katrina, we still had water pressure so we were very lucky there. Um, but that is something else you could do. Make sure outside, Anything that could blow away, you secure, either bring it inside or if you have a porch, kind of tuck it in your porch so it can't fly away and uh, break your windows. We have a pool house slash shop. <laughs> so we took all of Quinn's like slides and toys and put them in there and closed the garage door. We brought our barbecue pit onto the porch. Uh, she has another toy we brought onto the porch and then any little things we brought inside to make sure that there's nothing that, if we do get strong winds, would blow around and possibly break a window. Of course, for this storm and for any storm, if we were really worried about flooding from a storm surge, we would have evacuated, but we weren't too concerned with that. But if that all of a sudden became a concern, or if um, they were expecting the storm to really gain in strength, we still could leave or would leave. But. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be doing that for this storm. Uh, however, we're still prepared with our bags just in case. And another threat is the Mississippi River. Um, the Mississippi River is really high. They've actually opened the spillway twice this year, which is really uncommon, but the river keeps rising. And one concern was that the river would wa rise so high that the levees could possibly not hold it, that if the levees breached, it would flood. So that is a concern because if a river levee breaches, you're not going to get much warning and you're going to have to get out quick uh, because don't hold me to these numbers, but you could wind up with six to 10 feet of water in your house. I mean, similar to Katrina. So we also have a plan for that. We live in a one story home but uh, we also live with my dad. He lives here too. And 
his business is two stories. So if we did get an alert that the Mississippi River had breached and we needed to get to higher grounds, we would immediately throw all of our go bags in the car, put the kids in the car and rush to his work, which is only two miles away. So we can get there really quickly, immediately go up to the second story. So that's our plan for that. Now, once again, worst case scenario, <laughs> like we should be totally fine, but it's best to be prepared because what would happen if we didn't have diapers ready and we didn't have clothes ready, we would have to run there and we'd be, we would be stuck there for days and days with no diapers and no clothes and no toothbrushes and no food. So that's why we like to be prepared because worst case scenario, if that 1% chance happens, we're ready. We have our clothes, we have diapers, toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, um, food, water, and we can throw it all in the car in less than five minutes and get out of here. Especially with my dad's help, we could probably load everything and the kids in the car in like 90 seconds <laughs> and get out of here. So that's why we just like being extra prepared. And the other thing we're prepared for is if while we're staying here in our home, we lose power because a lot of times, a lot of times um, we've lost power before during hurricanes that we've stayed for and you have to be prepared for that as well. Um, we actually have a gas stove that has an electric cutoff, which I think is so stupid. So if we lose power, we can't cook even though we have a gas stove. But my dad has like a little camp stove that we bring inside so we can still cook. Um, we have all of our big block ice and we take the good ice chest and put all of our food from the fridge and the freezer in the ice chest with the block ice. Um, we, well, we actually use two ice chests. The good ice chest is all of our freezer stuff that we don't need to get in and out of very often. We put that with block ice, close it and don't open it. And then we have a second ice chest for like our lunch meat and our cheese and stuff like that that we can go in and out of uh, to make food. So if we lose power, we can still cook. We still have our food. You know, a lot of people don't, like if they lose power, they lose water too. So if that is you, it would be best to go ahead and fill up all your bathtubs with water so that you still have access to water with no power. And of course we have flashlights batteries all that given stuff one thing i also forgot to mention is a small battery powered radio so that way if you lose power you are still in touch with what's going on and what's happening so that's really important too the biggest concern is air conditioning if we lose power it's going to get hot and it's going to get hot quick so with the babies i would just have to watch and see if it looks like we were going to be out of power for like two plus days, we go to a family member's house, uh, provided that they didn't also lose power. But that wraps up today's video. I just thought it was more appropriate given the situation, but I hope everyone is staying safe and dry and hopefully this storm will just blow over real quick. So if you liked it, if you found it helpful, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Oh, Quinn wants to say hi real quick. <laughs> say hi. Hi. Say, give it a thumbs up. Can you say thumbs up? Thumbs up. Can you say subscribe? Why? Close enough. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe um, and leave us a comment about anything you want and we'll get back to you. <laughs> All right, say bye. Bye. <laughs>